Hello and welcome to your weekly five minutes of intercourse with Dr. Don because we all need to talk at least a little about sex. This week I'll be talking about the five reasons why this YouTube channel needs to exist. This is the human sexuality class you want to take, not the one you had to take, or for that matter, have never taken. And why do you want to take this human sexuality class? Simple. Because it's honest. It's honest in your nurturing of sex education. And we generally do terrible things in the nurturing of sex. The nurture of sex is associated with our learning, whereas the nature of sex is associated with basic drives and instincts. For example, the nature of sex may have us playing house or playing doctor to find out what feels good and what does not. And the nurture of sex may have us simply asking our parents, what are the names of the body parts that we're exploring? And the answers we get from our parents, this is where it begins to get terrible. If the body parts are associated with our eyes or our, our ears or, or our nose, then life is good. The answers are clear and understandable. If the body parts aren't associated with our eyes, our ears, and our nose, then life isn't so good, and the answers become unclear and ambiguous and terribly euphemistic. That's your wee-wee. That's your cookie. Those are your private parts. Herein lies one of the most terrible things we do to the nurturer of sex. We intentionally talk wrong about it! And by doing this, we create the nature-nurture sex problem. By nature, sex is simple. It drives healthy explorations for learning. By nurture, sex is complicated by us intentionally hindering learning. The nature-nurture sex problem is so common, we often don't recognize it. Imagine, if you will, a little girl's parents who, in keeping her innocent, do not teach her the word vagina to represent her vagina, but instead teach her the word cookie to represent her vagina. Now imagine this same little girl watching Sesame Street, and as she's watching Sesame Street, the cookie monster comes on. Silly as this example may be, this is the foundation of this little girl's sexual knowledge. Imagine one more scenario with me. This time, let's imagine a little boy's parents who, in keeping him innocent, they do not teach him the word penis to represent his penis, but instead teach him the word private parts to represent his penis. Now I have a question for you. Will this little boy be able to describe what happened to him with a sexual predator? Especially knowing that sexual predator often uses the same intentionally unclear words the parents use. This is private. This is a secret. These are words you do not have to know until you're much, much older. Guess when children are most likely to report being sexually abused? During or right after the abuse or years afterward? For those of you who guessed years afterward, you are correct. Why? Because only until we have the words to describe something can we understand and have some sense of control over that thing. Keeping anatomically correct words away from children does not keep them innocent. It makes them ignorant. It makes them powerless. It makes us sexually illiterate. This channel will combat the ramifications of sexual illiteracy. Sexual illiteracy causes obvious things like sexually transmitted infections and unwanted pregnancies. But this is only the tip of the iceberg in as far as the effects of sexual illiteracy, which range from shame, poor body image, and sexual stereotypes to rape, domestic violence, and murder. How will we combat sexual illiteracy? Simple. We'll do to us what should have been done to us years ago. We'll speak truthfully about sex. Our truth may be coming from Henry Havelock Ellis's classic 19th century studies demonstrating transgenderism to be biologically based, or Alfred Kinsey's 
mid-20th century studies of sexual orientation being on a continuum, or William Masters and Virginia Johnson's late 20th century studies demonstrating the differences between the male and female orgasm, or Lori Numina's recent studies finding erogenous zones exist throughout our bodies. No matter the sexual subject, our truth will always be rooted within scientific data. This channel will gain its information about sex from the sciences, not rhetoric. Now we aren't naive. We recognize political and religious rhetoric is often intertwined within discussions of sex, and we'll address these types of rhetoric as the need arises. But what we won't do is initiate discussions of sex based upon unfounded stereotypes. Unfounded stereotypes and misinformation about sex is abundant on the internet, even in places where it's supposed to be real. For example, when researchers at San Diego State University examined 177 sexual health-based websites, they found nearly half of them contained inaccurate information. Which brings me to reason number four. The internet needs more sex on it. Not that type of sex. There's already plenty of the sexational reality TV type of sex on the internet which ironically is rarely rooted within reality. There are very few places that allow for real sex. Real sex involves open and honest discussions that hold no personal biases or judgments. Please consider this channel a place for real sex. Which brings us to our last reason for this channel's existence, exploring your sexual literacy. Sexual literacy is at the core of your human sexuality. It drives our biological goals like pregnancy, our psychological goals like love, and our sociological goals like marriage to be formed, fully explored, and successfully achieved. Yet like real sex, our society grants us very few places to explore our sexual literacy. I hope you consider this channel one of those places. My weekly five minutes of intercourse with you is coming to an end about five minutes ago. Let me leave you with a question and a promise. Question, are you ready for sexual empowerment? Yes, I said sexual empowerment. I promise every week's topic will add to your sexual empowerment. So, are you ready? Thanks for watching. If you could rate this video, I'd appreciate it. This channel's official launch date is September 21st, 2017, but subscribe now so you'll be notified when teaser intercourses are uploaded. Like us on Facebook at 5MI Weekly and follow us on Twitter. If you have suggestions about intercourse topics, then leave your ideas in the comment section or send those suggestions on Twitter to at 5MI underscore weekly using the hashtag 5MI topics. If I use your ideas for an intercourse, then I promise I'll be sending you a free copy of Being, my book on happiness.